Are you interested in building an immersion chiller to cool down your wort or brew day? Well, if you are, keep watching. I'll show you how I build one. Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna walk through how I built my new upgraded wort chiller for my new brewery. Now, I've mentioned this before in the past few DIY videos. I'm upgrading my five gallon capacity brewery, brewery, <laughs> to a uh, 10 gallon capacity brewery. And part of that process was building mash tons and hot liquor tanks and buying pumps and hoses. And I'll get into all that when it all comes together later. But for the moment, I wanted to focus on my, uh, my new immersion chiller because I have an old one. Now, as you can see here, here's my old one. This is my old 25 or 20 foot 3 8 OD version chiller I bought at a homebrew shop years ago. And here is my eight gallon kettle that you see in many of my videos. And it is appropriately sized where it fits in there just right and it works, it works well for that capacity. Well, this is way too small for my new brew kettle over here, which is a 20 gallon custom um, welded spike brewing kettle. And this is way too small, right? So it, it would take forever to, to uh, chill anything down. So I built this work chiller here. It's uh, twice as big as this, uh, twice as long at least. A little bit bigger in diameter. I did a little bit of work of my own here to space out the coils, attach some fittings, just like I did on this one. Not much different, just, just bigger. So if you want to see the step-by-step -step and how I do this, keep on watching. The parts list is pretty small for this project, folks. Basically 50 feet of 3 8 OD copper coil, a length of bare copper wire. Uh, I think I have 20 feet wrapped up here. I, I'm hoping I won't need all of it, but I have it just in case. A couple of dishwasher compression fittings, which uh, are 3 8 uh, OD or whatever that fit on this tubing just fine. And they uh, connect to a garden hose, which will be good for my restricting work chiller that I have on hand. And that's it for the parts. Basically, uh, for tools, a couple of adjustable wrenches or channel locks to tighten down the compression fittings. An optional pipe bender kit in case you want to bend the copper tubing without kinking it. This would be useful for that. I've had some success in the past forming coil without these, but it's really your option. And something to wrap the coil around to, uh, to form the chiller. And here's just a stock pot that I have on hand. Before you start bending and twisting metal around something, you have to start planning ahead and figure out what your final design intent is. For example, how high do you, how tall you want your work chiller to be and how wide or in diameter you want or need it to be. And because they're opposing goals with a fixed length of coil, uh, if you make it taller, it'll have to be narrower. If you want it to be wider, it'll have to be shorter. So take that into account, measure your brew kettle. Mine was, of, I think, about 19 inches in diameter, about 20 inches in height. So I went, and, uh, went on a spreadsheet, calculated some numbers, figured out the optimal diameter and height that I want for my kettle. And to, to, to hit that number, I found a stock pot in my house that was 10 inches in diameter. And I plugged that in, I got the height, to be within a range that was suitable for the kind of beer that I'm making and the size batches that I'll be making going forward. Uh, but optionally, you know, you, you could also go back to the old faithful Kurinus keg. It's an eight and a half inch diameter and you can wrap a coil around here just fine too, but it'll be a taller coil than if you used a 10 inch diameter pot like this. And for myself, the 10 inch pot is the better option. All right, let's start bending. I need to leave some length here so I'm going to bend to stick up and out of the pot because you'll have to have enough coil on the inside that I'll have to straighten out as well, but also on the bottom to bend them straight up so they come up and over the top of the pot. 
I dropped my coil into my new brew kettle here just to see how it looked proportioned before I do any more work on this. And I think it looks pretty darn good. Um, it's not too close to the walls. It's not too small either. It's clearing my thermometer and my ports here on the inside of the wall that you probably cannot see very well. And uh, now, since while it's in here, now I'm gonna go ahead and, and, un and uncoil this vertical piece uh, a little taller here so it, so it protrudes out of the pot and it can bend in certain ways outside the pot before I go ahead and put my compression fitting on. Now you can see here, I'm about ready to, to form a, a, a tighter bend here on this run. So I slid my, my uh, spring butter tube down here and I'm gonna go find a spot to bend it. All right, let's see how that looks. So now I got my vertical piece sticking out just, just where I want it right here. I'm gonna go ahead and bend it about maybe uh, an inch over the top of the lip here. I'm gonna bend it over and protrude it out past the lip of the pot. All right, that looks pretty good. Nice. My next step should be to uncoil this top one a bit so it also rises and follows the same tracking out, but I'm not done setting the final height of this yet with my bare copper wire. So this height is gonna change uh, as I do that. So I'm not gonna completely unwind it, but I do wanna get it started. So I will actually maybe do a, like a half turn That's good enough for now. All right, so now I pull it out of the pot. Now, you see, it's like, it, it's like a collapsed spring, folks. It's, th this is the solid height, right? I don't want it to be solid height because then it'll be harder for the, for the hot work to get in between here. And the closer these are together, the less efficient the cooling effect is. So I definitely want to space them out something more like this, right? And to do that, I have this bare wire here that I bought that I'm going to weave in some fashion between the coils uh, in the manner I yet have to determine to give them the space out a little bit. The original wire gauge I bought for this ended up being too big in diameter. It was very hard to form and bend and twist and navigate through all these, these coils here. And I ended up discarding that idea. And I went and found some used uh, wire, some insulated wire I had on hand that I just stripped the insulation off of and I was able to use that much more effectively. Okay, so let's do this final leg here, okay? So what I have here is five feet of my strip solid bare wire folded in half, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and slide it underneath the first row here. Okay, just like that. Okay, now I'm gonna pull up these one at a time and I'm going to weave it through the gap down, be down below here and then I'll weave the other one through the opposite way all right so then I tighten it up and I do a twist in it the first one's the hardest because all the weight of the copper is weighting down on you it gets easier as you climb all right and you do it again, row by row, where you lift up the next row, you weave the wire through here, just like you're doing some sewing, right? And you pull the other strand from the other one through, okay? And again, you secure them close to each other, you give them a twist, just like a twist tie, and a loaf of bread, right? Okay? And you do this over and over until you get to the very top. And by that point, it'll be up and square just like this. And here's a close-up, folks. Just kind of showing you like the first two rounds getting started there. See? And there we go, folks. All twisted all the way up. I took a few turns up here now. So now I got this thing tied down in three places, basically. All right? Here, here, and here. And it's pretty solid. See? It's not, it's not like a slinky anymore. <laughs> That's what I was going for, a nice stiff uh, and, and spaced out chiller here. So what I got left to do here is obviously to tr trim down the wires and tuck them in. And uh, we'll just do that now. Huh? And there we are, all cleaned up. So uh, it's looking really good, guys. I'm really excited. Next step. 
All right, so I put it back in the kettle here just to so I know the length of this second arm that I need to bend. So I, uh, it can probably bend a little bit more. So I'm I'm going to start bending it back here with the pipe bender, and I'm going to follow this this other one and up and out the pot. Okay, it's time to put on the, the dishwasher fittings here. So, oh, hold on a minute. First things first, press the nut, then the sleeve or the ferrule, and then this. So, let's screw it on. And I'll tighten that after I put them both on here. All right, so the nut, ferrule, fitting. Hold this while I tighten this. Okay. Okay, there we go for that. Another thing I did with the with the bare wire, some scraps, is that I tied the vertical section here to the coil through a couple coils here and around to make sure it was on there really good because now I can lift this thing up with one hand by the uh, by the posts and it doesn't move at all. It, d it doesn't slinky, it doesn't uh, you know, sloppily move around. It's, it's really firm and rigid now. And at the top of the post here, I also used some of the loose wire to fasten these two sections together. So it makes it really easy to carry and lift it in and out of the pot. And here it is all done folks, all tied up, all rigid, all connected, all ready to go. So let's put it in the pot. Well, that fits in there just fine, folks. Look at that. A couple inches of spare. I could have made it a little lower, but it doesn't matter to me. Looks really good. It goes right on down in here just fine. Look at that. Boy, that, that works great. I mean, it looks rigid. It comes in on there with one hand. It's big enough to fit this bigger pot. It's about 10 inches tall, as best I can guess. And, uh, oh man, I can't wait to use this. I'm so excited. And that's all there is to it, folks. Real simple immersion chiller. Anyone can make one of these. Hardest part was doing the little weaving here, but that was my own uh, desire to, to do it this way. You can do it any way you want. The concept is very simple. I put a parts list down in the video description down below. And while you're down there looking around, give me a thumbs up if you could and subscribe. It would be much appreciated. And other than that, I'll talk to you all later. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out other videos on my YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe.